this video I'll be looking at song 4, which is called The Breach, and things start to get a little bit dark at this point on the album. Several years had passed since the last song, and this new entity that was plaguing my dreams was a hundred times worse than the monster in the cupboard from my first lucid dream. And this was a very troubled time in my life. And although my dreams were equally troubled, I could always escape into lucid dreams and find peace in that world of freedom. And then one night, I found myself in a lucid dream and I was outside and it was cold and it was dark and it was raining. And I found myself thinking, what's the point? What's the point of doing anything in here? Nobody's watching. Nobody cares. It's just me all alone inside my own mind. And I wandered bored through the empty streets of the town where I grew up. And then I woke up and I thought, damn, what is this darkness that is now breaching through into the one place where I could go to escape from it? And I wondered on a psychological level, what did it mean that this depression was now seeping into a part of my mind that until now had remained untouched by it. And it was at this point in my life that I decided to utilise one of the true benefits of lucid dreaming. When I made it my goal to go into a dream and confront my subconscious mind and ask it just what the hell was going on. Because although it's great fun to go into a lucid dream and do all the things that you can't normally do, like running really fast, jumping over houses, flying over towns, driving fast cars, walking through walls, destroying things, visiting alien worlds, acting like a superhero, feeling like a god, travelling back in time, travelling forward through time, and all the other amazing possibilities that lucid dreaming opens up to us. At the end of the day, you're just messing around inside your own head. There's nobody else in there. You're showing off to yourself. It's just you inside your own mind. But that is also one of the great things about it. Being able to go into your own mind and wander through and explore your subconscious. Because as you're probably aware, everything you see in your dream world, the people, the places, the events, the stories, the complex plot lines that play out there, it's all created by your mind. It's a projection from your subconscious, made up from your fears and desires, your thoughts, your memories, experiences, negative thought patterns, subconscious subroutines, bad thinking habits that you've developed throughout your life, all of the negative aspects of your mind, as well as all the positive aspects, are what makes up the contents of your dream. So to go into my dream and ask a specific question was me directly accessing my subconscious mind and demanding an answer as to what was going on. And in this case, the question was, what was this darkness that, as the song says, was seeping through the cracks in my psyche? And why was it happening? And the account of what happened when I achieved this is in part two of this song, which is called The Shooting Star Child. Once again, I found myself in the cold, dark, wet, empty streets of the town where I grew up. And once again, I found myself thinking, what's the point? But then I remembered my dream goal and I got angry and I shouted at the sky, why? Why is this happening? And at first there was no response, but then I heard a rumbling sound like distant thunder. And as it got nearer, the clouds parted and a light shone through. And then through the gap in the clouds came a shooting star. It came right down towards me and I caught it. And when I opened my hands, there was a small red plastic heart there. And I looked back at the sky confused. And when I looked back at my hands, there was a small, a tiny little baby in my hands. And I started to feel a tingling in my chest. And I looked back up and shouted again, What does this mean? I don't understand. And at first, there was no answer. And I thought, I can't take this with me. What am I supposed to do with it? And then, the most beautiful female voice came out of the clouds 
and said, you can carry it within your heart. I was now overwhelmed with emotion and I lifted the baby up towards me and as I did, it turned into a ball of light and I put it straight into my chest. And then I woke up, still tingling with emotion. And I still don't know what this dream actually meant. Was it a premonition? Was it an omen? Was my subconscious mind trying to tell me something? Although in Song 6, which includes the second part of the Shooting Star Child theme, offers an answer as to what this dream might have meant, I know these things are open to interpretation. But what is encouraging is that I went from being thoroughly fed up and feeling hopeless in the dream, and within a few minutes I had turned it around and woke up feeling elated. And this is the power of the subconscious mind. And if that transformation can happen in a dream, then it can also happen when you're awake. It's just a matter of utilising your subconscious and using its power to your advantage. Another thing I'd like to say about this song is that it is dedicated to a good friend of mine who sadly lost her battle to cancer a couple of years ago. Her name was Kerry McGregor and I had the pleasure of working with her during the 90s when we wrote music together and gigged extensively. And although the material that we wrote was at the opposite end of the scale from Citizen Kane, it was techno dance music, nice simple melodies, simple beats. It was nice to do something so different from my work with progressive rock at that time. So as a tribute to Kerry, this song has several elements from that style of music included in it. And the chord structure and melody of the shooting star child is actually from a song that we played together back then. Then the haunting vocal melody right at the end of the breach is from a song that we wrote together aptly named The Realm of Dreams. Then there's a section in song five where meeting with Kerry after she had passed away triggers a lucid dream for me. Because that's another one of these things, these advantages that lucid dreaming brings us. To be able to conjure up friends and relatives that have passed away. And I don't claim to know if these are actual spirits making contact from the other side. But it is strangely comforting to talk again with a friend or to hear stories again from a grandparent that is no longer with us. And who knows, maybe dreams are a gateway between this world and whatever lies beyond. Thanks for watching.